This is 9.2, Endocrine Gland Notes. The essential question is, what are the locations and the functions of the various endocrine glands of the body? Other endocrine glands that are located outside the brain are the thyroid gland, which is located around the throat area in front of the, the thyroid cartilage or the Adam's apple. The hormone that it produces is the thyroid hormone. Examples of specific thyroid hormone is the thyroxine and T3 and T4 hormones. And their job is to control the basal metabolic rate, which is a control of your metabolism, all of the chemical processes and reactions that are happening in the body. It is under the control of the TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone. The other hormone that the thyroid gland produces is calcitonin, and their job is to decrease blood calcium when there is too much levels of calcium in the blood. And recall from the skeletal system, one of the functions of bone is to restore calcium until it is needed. So calcitonin is what allows the uh, calcium to move in from the blood and be stored into the bone. Note the location of the thyroid gland. It is surrounding the neck region around the windpipe, the trachea, and it's located just below the larynx or the thyroid cartilage that surrounds the larynx, and which is the Adam's apple. On the back side or the posterior side of the thyroid gland is the parathyroid gland, and as the name replies, para means surrounding, so parathyroid hormone, the gland, is located just on the back side those four little bumps on the back side of the thyroid gland are the uh, parathyroid glands. They have the opposite effect to the calcitonin. The parathyroid gland produces the parathyroid hormone, and their job is to increase bliss calcium, which means that when the body or specifically muscles and nerves require calcium to be able to work properly so when there is calcium is needed and there's not enough in the blood then the cells called osteoclasts will break down bone where the calciums are stored and then put it back into the blood to be utilized by the muscles and the nerves. The thymus gland sits on top of it is a, a, a piece of flesh that lies on top of the heart and they produce the thymosine hormone and their job is to stimulate the development of the T-cells, which is a primary cells that are involved in the immune system and their immune response. Pancreas is located in the upper abdominal region on the left side, just behind the stomach. There are two hormones or chemicals produced by the pancreas. There is insulin anytime you eat, and there are nutrients or glucose in the blood. The insulin will take the glucose from the blood and put it into the cell where it's needed for nutrients. When there is a, too much sugar or glucose in the blood, then your body will store it. And they will store it in the liver in the form of glycogen. And what the glucagon does is take that glycogen and turn it back into the glucose and put it into the blood so then it can be used by insulin it can take it then insulin can take it and put it back into the cell where it's needed. Here is a diagram explaining how the blood glucose is regulated. After a huge meal of carbohydrate like pasta the blood glucose or the sugar levels in your blood will increase that will signal the pancreas to release insulin then what the insulin is going to do is have the glucose, take the glucose, and put it into the cells where it is needed. That will cause the blood glucose to go down. If there are too much glucose in the blood, even after the cells use up the glucose, the excess gets stored in the liver in the form of glycogen. That will bring back the blood glucose to the normal levels and that will create a, a homeostasis, homeostasis which means that the blood glucose should be around 70 to 110 milligrams per 100 milliliters of blood. 
But then when you haven't eaten for a while or you skip a meal, then the levels of the glucose in the blood is going to go down. That's going to trigger the pancreas to release glucagon. And that's going to signal the liver to churn back the glycogen into glucose and put it into the blood so it can be used. That's going to increase or level out the levels of the glucose in the blood, bringing it back to homeostasis. Again, the blood glucose level, the normal blood glucose level is between the 70 to 110 milligrams per 100 milliliters of blood. And if you have anything above 300 or 200 or 300 uh, blood glucose levels, then that could indicate diabetes would be one disease that is affected by blood glucose. The adrenal gland is located on top of the kidneys. The name indicates the location. Renal refers to kidneys and the ad or ad refers to adjacent, which means that it's near or next to the kidneys, adrenal gland. There are two parts to the adrenal gland. The outer layer is called the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex produces two hormones, well, various hormones, um, glucocorticoids or cortisol. There are different forms of the glucocorticoids, and they respond to any type of stress or injury, and they could carry out certain uh, anti-inflammatory response due to the uh, injury to the cells. Remember, anytime cells are injured, then it can ca cause swelling. The adrenal cortex is activated by the adrenocorticotropic hormone, which is produced by the anterior portion of the pituitary gland. The middle portion of the adrenal gland is called the adrenal medulla. It produces epinephrine or adrenaline, and it stimulates the fight or flight response of basically the uh, sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. And here is the location, this little yellow structure sitting on top of the kidneys. These are your kidneys here on either side. And notice this yellow area on the outside. This is your adrenal cortex, and the brown part in the middle is your adrenal medulla. Here are pictures of the um, majority of the endocrine organs. The, there are three in the brain. The pineal gland is on the posterior portion, uh, just behind the thalamus. And thalamus is this middle region here. So behind the thalamus is the pineal gland. Just diagonal and in front of the thalamus is the hypothalamus. And then below the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland. There are two endocrine glands in the neck. You have the major one, which is the thyroid gland. And on the back side of the thyroid gland, the four little spots on the back side of the thyroid gland is your parathyroid gland. The thymus gland sits on top of the heart on the chest, and then the pancreas is located just on the left side uh, behind the stomach and the upper abdominal region. Then you have the adrenal gland, which sits on top of the kidneys. Then you have the ovaries in females, that's on either side of the um, pelvic region. And then in males, the testes or testis inside the scrotum in the male reproductive system. The 9.2 notes homework. Number one, which pairs of endocrine organs work together to regulate body functions? Number two, which endocrine organs are regulated by the pituitary gland? Number three, how is calcium levels in the blood regulated utilizing the negative feedback mechanism?